Hello students, myself Mitri Dave and today we are going to discuss about joints and classification of stone masonry. So let us begin our today's lecture first. So first we will see the joints in stone masonry. So it can be of various types, in which the first type is the butt or square, then it can be riveted or lap, then it can be tongued and grooved, then tabled, then saddled or water, then rusticated, plugged, well and lastly the cramped one. So let us see all one by one. So the first one is the butt or square. It means the butt joint is a very simple and easy and commonly used joint in ordinary stone masonry work. In this type of joint, two adjacent stones are placed in such a way that their square faces are abutted with each other as shown in this figure. Now let us move to the second one which is riveted or lap. It means the left joint is provided where the movement of stone pieces is to be prevented. In this case, the ribbits are provided to prevent the movement of the stones. This joint is also known as the riveted joint and the length of the ribbit should not be less than 17 mm and the joint is mostly used in the archwork, coping or the gables. Here you can see a clear image of this riveted or left one. Now the next one is the or group. So here we can say in this case of joint a projection is kept on one stone and corresponding sinking is provided in the other stone as shown in this figure. This joint prevents sliding of one stone over the other but they are more expensive than the above two types of joints so they are less preferable. So this joint is also known as the joggle joint. Now let us move to the fourth one which is tapered. It means in this type of joint a joggle is formed in the bed of the stone to prevent the lateral movement. The depth of projection is about 40 mm and width of projection is about one third the breadth of the stone. So this type of joint is used in case of structures such as the sea walls where the lateral pressure is very heavy. Here you can see a clear image of this tapered type. Now let me talk about the fifth one which is saddled or what. It means this type of joint is provided to protect the joints of the cornices and such other sloped surfaces. With the help of this arrangement, any water moving on the slope is diverted from the joints. This is also known as the water joint. Here you can see how we can provide protection to these scowled surfaces. Now the sixth one is the rusticated. So sometimes the margins or edges of stones used for plinth, queen, outer walls of lower storage are sunk below the general level. So the term rusticated is used to indicate such masonry. This joint may be different types such as channeled joint, V joint, mold joint and channeled or as V joint. Right. So here you can see the four combinations in this image. Now let me talk about the seventh one which is plugged. It means the plug joint is same as the cramped joint. In this joint, devotel shaped cuts are made in the sides of adjacent stones as shown in the figure. After arranging the stone in their proper position, molten lead is poured in the joint. And this joint is mostly used for coping cornices and other work, right? So here you can see the clear image of this type of joint. Now the eighth one is the doveled. It means in this joint a hole is made into each stone and then the dovel which are small pieces of hard stone, slates or some gun metals, bronze or brass are used for connecting those stones and secured with cement. Usually the thickness of dovels are 2.5 cm and they are around 10 cm to 15 cm long. This joint prevents unwanted displacement of stones. When the dovel joint is provided for column, this is named as the bed plug. Here you can see how it can be joined. Now let me talk about the last one which is the cramped one. So in cramped joint, the holes are made on the adjacent stones which will be as dovetail shape. In this case, to connect these stones, cramps are used instead of dovels. The cramps are the piece of non-corrosive metal like gun metal, copper 
and their ends are torn down around a depth of 4 to 5 cm. After placing the cramp into a proper position, the rest of the spaces are grouted with lead or cement mortar. The cramp is provided to prevent the joint to open out due to slippage of one of the stones as shown in this figure. So with this we have completed all the joints used in the stone masonry. Now let me talk about the classification of stone masonry which is classified into two types the rubble one and the ashlar one. So let us start with the first rubble masonry. So this is the stone masonry type where stones employed are either underdressed or roughly dressed. So this masonry construction do not have uniform thickness and the strength of the rubble masonry is depend on different factors like the quality of mortar use, the use of long through stones, proper filling of mortar between the stone spaces as well as joints. So, when I want to talk about the classification of rubber masonry, it can be classified as the coarse, uncoarse, random, dry, polygonal and the flint one. Again, the coarse one can be classified as type 1, 2 and 3 and similarly the random one type 1 and 2. So, let us start with the first one, coarse rubber masonry. So, in coarse rubber masonry construction, the stones in a particular course are in equal height. The stones hence use possesses different sizes and in this type all the courses do not have same height. This type is commonly employed in the construction of public buildings, apartments, residential buildings and piers of ordinary bridges. When I talk about the one short course rubble masonry then I can say in this type the stones of same heights are used and the courses are also of the same heights. So the face stones are dressed by means of a hammer and the bushings do not project by more than 40 mm. The thickness of mortar joint does not exceed 10 mm. Here you can see a clear image of this one shot coarse rubble masonry. Now let me talk about the second type. It means the two shot coarse rubble masonry. It means it is similar to the type 1 but there are some exceptions like the first one is the stones to be used are of different heights now, right? The courses need not to be equal height. So in the first one, the courses as well as stones having the same height but here it is not the case. Only two stones are to be used to make up the height of one course and the thickness of mortar joints is 12 mm. Here you can see the image of this two short course rubber masonry. Now let me give you idea about the third short coast rubber masonry where which is similar to type 1 but again some exception from that is also there. So the stones to be used are of different height and the minimum is being of 5050 mm and the courses need not be of equal height. Only three stones are to be used to make up a height of one course that is the difference between two and three short courses right. And here the thickness of the mortar joints is increased by 16 mm. So you can get a clear idea from this image of three short coarse rubber masonry. Now let me talk about the uncoarse rubber masonry. It means in this type of rubber masonry, the stones are not dressed, but they are used as they are available from the quarry, except knocking out some corners. It means the courses are not maintained regularly. The large stones are laid first and the spaces between them are then filled up with the mean of spells or the snakes. It means the small parts. The wall is bought to a level every 300 to 500 mm and this type of rubble masonry being cheaper is used for the construction of the compound walls, go downs, garages and labor quarters right so here you can see a clear image of this uncoarse rubber masonry now let me talk about some of the random rubber masonry it means in this type of rubber masonry the stones of irregular sizes and shapes are used and the stones are arranged so as to have a good appearance more skill is required to make this masonry structurally stable if the face stones are Chisel raised and the thickness of mortar joist does not exceed 6 mm, it is known as the random rubble masonry one shot. 
and when i talk about the second shot it means if the face stones are hemodressed and the thickness of mortar choice does not exceed 12 mm it is known as the random rubble masonry two shot so this type of masonry is used for the construction of residential building compound wall as well as the go downs so here we have discussed these both shots also so now let us move to the next type which is dry rubble masonry so this is just similar to the construction to the coarse rubble masonry three shot except that no mortar is used in the joints so this type of construction is the cheapest but it requires more skill in construction it is extensively used for compound walls pitching on bridge approaches or retaining walls in order to prevent the displacement of stones and to make the work more stable the two courses at the top and about 500 mm length at the ends are sometimes built in the mortar now let me talk about the next one polygonal rubble masonry it means in this type of rubble masonry the stones are hammer dressed and the stones selected for the face work are dressed in an irregular polygonal shape thus the face joints are seen running in irregular fashion in all the direction it is to be noted that more skill is required in the construction of this type of masonry as the stones are of irregular shape it is difficult to adjust them with regard to ability and appearance of the work as a whole as shown in this figure now the last type of rubble masonry is the flint rubble masonry So in this type of rubble masonry the stones used are flints which are irregularly shaped nodules of silica so the width and the thickness vary from 80 to 150 mm and the length varies from 150 to 300 mm the stones are extremely hard but they are brittle and therefore they break easily the face arrangement may be either coarse or uncoarse The strength of a flint wall is increased by introducing lacing cores of either thin long stones or brick or tiles at vertical distance of 1 to 2 meters. This type of masonry is used at places where the flints are available readily and economically as shown in this figure. So now let me talk about the second type of stone masonry which is ashlar masonry. So here in this type of construction the square or rectangular blocks of stones are used so the courses are not necessarily of the same height the height of stones varies from 250 to 300 mm and the length of stones should not exceed 3 times the height and the depth into the wall should not be less equal to the half the height now this is the classification of ashlar masonry which can be classified as the fine type rough tooled rock faced chamfered and the block in course so let us start with the first type which is ashlar fine masonry so in this type of ashlar masonry the beds sides and faces are finely chiseled dressed the stones are arranged in proper bond and the thickness of mortar joints does not exceed 3 mm This type of construction gives perfectly smooth appearance but it is costly in construction. Here you can see a clear image of this ashlar fine masonry. Now the next type is the ashlar rough tooled masonry. It means in this type of ashlar masonry the beds and the sides are finely chiseled dressed but the face is made rough by means of tools. A strip about 25 mm wide and made by means of chisel is provided around the perimeter of every stone exposed for view the thickness of mortar joints does not exceed 6 mm so this type of work is also known as the plastered ashlar and here you can see a clear image of it now let us move to the next type which is ashlar rock or quarry faced masonry In this type of ashlar masonry a strip about 25 mm wide and made by means of a chisel is provided around the perimeter of every stone exposed for view as in case of rough tooled ashlar but the remaining portion of the face is left in the same form 
as received from the query. Only projection on the phase known as the bushings exceeding 80 mm are removed by a hammer. This type of construction gives massive appearance as shown in this figure. Now the next type is the Ashler chamfered masonry. It means in this type of Ashler masonry, the strip is provided as above. But it is chamfered or beveled at an angle of 45 degree by means of chisel for a depth of about 25 mm. So another strip 12 mm wide is then provided on the remaining exposed face of the stone and the surface inside the strip is left in the same form as received from well. So the large bushings projecting more than 80 mm are removed by a hammer. So a net appearance of the grooved joints is obtained with the help of this type of construction as shown in this video. Now the last one is the Ashler block in coarse masonry. It means this type of Ashler masonry occupies an intermediate position between the rubble masonry and the Ashler masonry. So the faces of the stones are generally hammer braced and the thickness of mortar joist does not exceed 6 mm. The depth of courses varies from 200 to 300 mm. So this type of construction is used for heavy engineering work such as retaining wall, sea wall, etc. And in some cases, it may also be adopted for theatres, railway station, temples, bridges and public buildings. Here you can see image of this type of masonry. So with this, we have completed all the types of Esler masonry. So we have understand classification of stone masonry in detail for rubble as well as Esler masonry. I hope you understand all the topics covered in today's lecture. Thank you for watching. See you soon in the next lecture.